Have you ever heard tales so tall they reach the skies of martial arts history? Among these, the story of a clash between Steven Seagal and Bruce Lee stands tall, shrouded in mystery and intrigue. I do not hit. It hits all by itself. What really happened between these two titans of martial arts? Let's embark on a journey to separate fact from fiction, exploring the legends that bind the legacy of these iconic figures. Bruce Lee, the Dragon of Martial Arts. Bruce Lee, born Lee Jun Fan on November 27, 1940 in San Francisco, California, grew to become more than just a martial artist. He became a cultural icon, whose philosophy and prowess transcended the confines of the dojo and entered the heart of global pop culture. His journey, marked by a relentless pursuit of excellence and a revolutionary approach to martial arts, left an indelible mark on the world. Lee's roots in martial arts began in Hong Kong, where he was introduced to Wing Chun, a form of Chinese Kung Fu, under the tutelage of Master IP Man. Despite facing challenges due to his mixed heritage, Lee's passion and dedication to martial arts never wavered. His early life was also characterized by appearances in Hong Kong cinema, thanks to his father's connections to the film industry. This exposure to acting at a young age would later play a pivotal role in his journey to stardom. In 1959, Lee moved to the United States to claim his citizenship and pursue higher education. Settling in Seattle, he began teaching martial arts while attending college. It was here that Lee's philosophical approach to martial arts began to take shape, influenced by his studies in philosophy at the University of Washington. Lee's philosophy was rooted in the principle of adaptability and efficiency, emphasizing the importance of being like water, flexible and adaptable to any situation. Lee's revolutionary approach to martial arts was crystallized with the development of Jeet Kune Do, a martial art form that he founded. Jeet Kune Do was born out of Lee's belief that traditional martial arts were too rigid and bound by outdated traditions. Instead, Jeet Kune Do promoted a more direct, efficient, and fluid way of combat, incorporating techniques from various martial arts disciplines. This philosophy not only challenged the norms of traditional martial arts, but also encouraged practitioners to adapt and evolve their style. Bruce Lee's impact on pop culture was monumental, propelled by his roles in films such as The Big Boss, Fist of Fury, Way of the Dragon, and the posthumously released Enter the Dragon. These films not only showcased Lee's incredible martial arts skills, but also brought Asian culture and martial arts to a global audience. Lee's on-screen charisma, coupled with his philosophy of self-expression and personal liberation, resonated with audiences worldwide, making him an enduring symbol of martial arts excellence. Off-screen, Lee was a dedicated family man, married to Linda Emery, with whom he had two children, Brandon and Shannon. His personal life, however, was also marked by struggles, including battling against racism and stereotyping in Hollywood. Despite these challenges, Lee's determination never faltered, and he continued to push the boundaries of what was possible, both in martial arts and in life. Tragically, Bruce Lee's life was cut short on July 20th, 1973, when he died under mysterious circumstances at the age of 32. Yet, his legacy lives on, not only through his films and martial arts philosophy, but also through the Bruce Lee Foundation, which aims to share his message of personal growth, positive energy, and self-expression with future generations. Steven Siegel, the Aikido Enigma. Steven Frederick Siegel was born on April 10, 1952, in Lansing, Michigan, and would grow to become an enigmatic figure in the world of martial arts and Hollywood. His path from a dojo in Japan to the silver screens of Hollywood is a tale of ambition, controversy, and the blending of martial arts with cinematic spectacle. Unlike Bruce Lee, whose martial arts philosophy and cinematic contributions have been universally celebrated, Siegel's legacy is a complex tapestry of undeniable skill, bold claims, and polarized opinions. Seagull's martial arts journey began at an early age, but it was his move to Japan that marked the true beginning of his deep dive into the martial world. At the age of 17, Seagull moved to Japan, immersing himself in the study of Aikido. Aikido, 
a Japanese martial art focusing on using an opponent's force against them, became Seagal's signature. His dedication and skill were evident, as he eventually became the first foreigner to operate an Aikido dojo in Japan, a significant achievement given the country's traditional views on martial arts teaching. Upon returning to the United States in the 1980s, Seagal continued to teach Aikido, now in West Hollywood. It was during this time that he began to forge connections in Hollywood, leveraging his martial arts expertise to break into the film industry. His big break came with the release of Above the Law in 1988, marking the beginning of his rise to fame as an action movie star. Siegel's unique blend of Aikido techniques and his imposing physical presence made him a distinctive figure in action cinema, leading to a series of successful films, including Hard to Kill, Under Siege, and Exit Wounds. Siegel's on-screen persona was that of an unbeatable warrior, often portraying characters with a strong moral code, fighting against corruption and injustice. His films, characterized by their high-octane action sequences and Seagal's cool, unflappable demeanor, contributed to the popularization of Aikido worldwide. However, his claims about his martial arts prowess and background have been a source of controversy and skepticism. One of the most debated claims surrounding Seagal involves an alleged encounter with Bruce Lee. Siegel has been quoted as saying he met and even fought Bruce Lee, a claim that has been met with doubt and scrutiny. Given the timeline of Siegel's own martial arts development and Bruce Lee's untimely death in 1973, many question the veracity of these claims. Critics argue that Siegel's accounts of his martial arts experiences, including the supposed meeting with Lee, are embellished or entirely fabricated, designed to enhance his mystique and credibility in the martial arts community. Despite these controversies, Seagal's influence on martial arts and action cinema cannot be denied. His movies introduced Aikido to a global audience, showcasing the martial arts principles of harmony and the redirection of aggression. Beyond his film career, Seagal has also been involved in law enforcement, further adding to his enigmatic persona. He has served as a reserve deputy chief in the Jefferson Parish, Louisiana Sheriff's Office, and starred in Steven Seagal Lawman, a reality television series that followed his adventures in law enforcement. Seagal's martial arts philosophy, while less codified than Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, emphasizes the effectiveness of Aikido in real-world situations. He has often spoken about the importance of inner peace, harmony, and the spiritual aspects of martial arts training. These principles, along with his cinematic contributions, have left an indelible mark on the martial arts world, even as debates about his claims and legacy continue. The Fabric of a Myth The tale of Steven Seagal and Bruce Lee's purported encounter is a narrative woven from the threads of hearsay, speculation, and the enigmatic allure of what could have been. This chapter delves into the origins of the claim, tracing its trajectory from whispered rumor to a story that has captivated the imaginations of martial arts enthusiasts and skeptics alike. The roots of this myth trace back to interviews and media appearances by Seagal, where his comments on Bruce Lee and their alleged interactions have been both vague and varied. Seagal, known for his storytelling, has made several statements over the years that suggest a personal connection with Lee, including claims of having met and exchanged martial arts insights with him. These claims, however, lack corroborative evidence and specific details, leading many to question their authenticity. The spread of the myth was catalyzed by the media's fascination with celebrity and the mystique surrounding martial arts legends. In the absence of social media and the internet in the era when these claims first surfaced, martial arts magazines, interviews, and fan discussions acted as the primary conduits for such stories. The tantalizing idea of two martial arts icons clashing or even sharing knowledge was irresistible to fans, feeding into the narrative despite the lack of concrete evidence. Further complicating the matter is the timeline and geographical inconsistencies. Bruce Lee passed away in 1973, at a time when Seagal was still establishing his martial arts career, primarily in Japan. The exact details of Seagal's return to the United States and his whereabouts during the late 60s and early 70s are murky, making it difficult to pinpoint any plausible window for their supposed meeting. Critics of the claim point to these inconsistencies as evidence of its implausibility, 
Moreover, the martial arts community itself is divided on the issue. While some practitioners and fans are eager to believe in the possibility of such an encounter, others insist on adhering to verifiable facts and timelines. The lack of first-hand accounts or documentation from credible sources associated with Lee or Siegel at the time further muddies the waters, leaving the story in the realm of speculation. The allure of the myth also lies in its reflection of the broader cultural fascination with what-if scenarios involving iconic figures. Just as fans speculate about hypothetical matches between historical figures or fictional characters, the Seagal Lee narrative taps into a similar vein of curiosity and imagination. It represents a clash of styles, philosophies, and personalities that, whether factual or not, stimulates discussion and debate within the martial arts and entertainment communities. Analyzing the narrative through the lens of martial arts culture reveals deeper undercurrents. Both Bruce Lee and Steven Seagal represent different philosophies and epics in martial arts history. Lee is often celebrated for his revolutionary approach to martial arts, emphasizing fluidity, adaptability, and the integration of various styles. Siegel, on the other hand, introduced Aikido to a wider audience, showcasing its principles of harmony and non-aggression in a Hollywood context. The imagined meeting between these two figures, therefore, symbolizes a broader dialogue between differing martial arts philosophies and the evolution of martial arts in popular culture. Skeptics argue that the perpetuation of the myth serves to embellish Seagal's martial arts credentials and Hollywood persona. In a world where personal branding and myth-making are integral to celebrity status, tales of past encounters with legends like Bruce Lee can enhance an individual's mystique and appeal. This phenomenon is not unique to Seagal. Numerous public figures have been known to exaggerate or fabricate stories to bolster their personal narratives. The fabric of this myth is interwoven with the complexities of memory, storytelling, and the human penchant for myth-making. As the years pass, the line between fact and fiction becomes increasingly blurred, with each retelling adding layers to the legend. In the absence of definitive proof, the story of Steven Seagal and Bruce Lee's alleged encounter occupies a liminal space between reality and fantasy, a testament to the enduring power of narrative in shaping the legacies of martial arts icons. Martial Arts in Hollywood The fusion of martial arts and Hollywood cinema has not only revolutionized action filmmaking, but has also elevated practitioners to the status of cultural icons. This chapter explores the dynamic relationship between martial arts and Hollywood, highlighting the significant contributions of Bruce Lee and Steven Seagal to understand the context of their legendary status and the speculative narratives surrounding their purported meeting. The journey of martial arts into the heart of Hollywood is synonymous with Bruce Lee's rise to stardom. Lee's arrival in Hollywood was marked by small roles that stereotypically represented Asian characters. However, his unparalleled martial arts skills, charisma, and philosophy quickly set him apart, leading to his breakout role in The Green Hornet. Despite the series' short lifespan, it introduced Lee to American audiences and showcased the potential of martial arts in mainstream media. Lee's subsequent return to Hong Kong to star in movies like The Big Boss and Fist of Fury was a strategic move that leveraged the international film market to establish him as a leading man. When he returned to Hollywood with Enter the Dragon, he had already achieved international fame. The film's success marked a turning point, proving the commercial viability of martial arts in cinema and paving the way for future stars. Lee's philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, emphasizing fluidity and adaptability, also influenced his filmmaking, integrating diverse martial arts styles and setting a new standard for action choreography. While Lee is often credited with popularizing martial arts in the West, Steven Seagal's emergence in the late 1980s introduced audiences to Aikido, a martial art focusing on using an opponent's energy against them. Seagal's debut in Above the Law showcased Aikido's unique techniques, differentiating him from other action stars and garnering a following. His portrayal of characters with a strong moral code, coupled with his real-life persona as a 7th Dan black belt in Aikido, blurred the lines between the actor and the roles he played, contributing to his mystique. Siegel's rise to fame in the 1990s coincided with a burgeoning interest in martial arts in the United States, fueled by an influx of martial arts films and the growing availability of martial arts training. His films, 
characterized by their realism and the use of practical martial arts techniques, offered a contrast to the highly stylized action of traditional kung fu movies. This approach resonated with American audiences, further entrenching martial arts in the cultural zeitgeist. The relationship between martial arts and Hollywood is also reflected in the industry's impact on the martial arts community. The success of martial arts films has led to increased interest and participation in martial arts training, with schools and dojos experiencing surges in enrollment following the release of significant films. Conversely, Hollywood's demand for authentic martial arts representation has created opportunities for skilled practitioners to transition into film, either as actors, stunt coordinators, or choreographers. The legendary status of figures like Lee and Seagal can, in part, be attributed to their ability to transcend the role of martial artist to become symbols of cultural and philosophical ideals. Lee's portrayal of martial arts as a means of personal expression and self-improvement resonated deeply with audiences, making him a philosophical icon beyond his cinematic achievements. Siegel's focus on Aikido's principles of harmony and non-aggression offered a different perspective, emphasizing the martial arts' spiritual and ethical dimensions. In the context of their contributions to martial arts and Hollywood, the plausibility of a meeting between Bruce Lee and Steven Siegel becomes a subject of fascination. While the timelines and geographic distances challenge the likelihood of such an encounter, the idea of two martial arts icons from different eras crossing paths captures the imagination. It represents a meeting of philosophies, styles, and generations, embodying the broader narrative of martial arts evolution and its interplay with Hollywood. The Timeline Discrepancy In the realm of martial arts legends, few stories are as tantalizing or as debated as the purported encounter between Bruce Lee and Steven Seagal. However, a factual analysis of their timelines reveals inconsistencies that challenge the plausibility of such an event. This chapter delves into the chronological details of both icons' lives to shed light on the narrative's discrepancies. Bruce Lee was born on November 27, 1940 in San Francisco, California, but grew up in Hong Kong. His martial arts journey began in earnest when he started training in Wing Chun under IP Man in the early 1950s. By 1959, Lee moved back to the United States settling in Seattle where he began teaching martial arts while attending college. In the early 1960s, Lee moved to Oakland and later to Los Angeles, where his career in teaching and acting began to take shape. His rise to international fame commenced with The Big Boss, released in 1971, followed by a string of successful films until his untimely death on July 20, 1973. Steven Siegel was born on April 10, 1952, in Lansing, Michigan. His martial arts training began with Aikido in the early 1970s, eventually moving to Japan to further his study and mastery of the art. Siegel became the first foreigner to operate an Aikido dojo in Japan, a feat that he achieved in the late 1970s. He returned to the United States in the mid-1980s, where he transitioned into film, making his debut in Above the Law in 1988. Siegel's rise to fame in Hollywood as an action star occurred well after Bruce Lee's death. The most glaring inconsistency in the narrative that Lee and Siegel met or fought lies in their respective timelines. Lee's ascent in the martial arts world and his subsequent film career were largely confined to the years before his death in 1973. During the years when Lee was active in the United States, Siegel was still a teenager, and there is no record of him being involved in the martial arts scene to the extent that he would have crossed paths with Lee. Moreover, Seagull's time in Japan, where he honed his Aikido skills and established his dojo, coincided with the peak and eventual end of Lee's career. Seagull's return to the United States and his entry into Hollywood occurred over a decade after Lee's death, making any direct encounter between them chronologically impossible. Another point of consideration is the geographic locations of both individuals during the years they were active. Lee's martial arts teaching and film career were primarily based in the United States, specifically in California, and later, his film work took him back to Hong Kong. Seagull's formative years in martial arts were spent in Japan, far from the circles in which Lee moved. The geographic separation further diminishes the likelihood of their paths crossing. 
The martial arts community in the United States during the 1960s and early 1970s was relatively small and interconnected. Had Siegel been a prominent figure in this community during Lee's lifetime, it is plausible that there would be some record or acknowledgement of their meeting. However, the absence of any such evidence from credible sources within the martial arts or film communities suggests that the narrative lacks a factual basis. The Power of Storytelling in Martial Arts Storytelling, with its capacity to weave the fabric of myths and legends, holds a venerable place in the martial arts world. It transcends the mere recounting of events, embedding itself into the very essence of martial arts culture. This chapter delves into how narratives, myths, and legends not only enrich the martial arts landscape, but also shape the perceptions of its practitioners, particularly the revered martial arts masters. The tradition of storytelling in martial arts is as old as the arts themselves. Ancient martial arts were shrouded in secrecy, taught in secluded temples and family compounds where masters passed down their knowledge to select students. The stories of these masters and their extraordinary feats became the stuff of legend, often embellished as they were passed from one generation to the next. These narratives served multiple purposes. They preserved the history and techniques of the martial art, instilled a sense of pride and belonging among practitioners, and conveyed moral and ethical lessons. The legends surrounding martial arts icons like Bruce Lee and Steven Seagal are integral to their public personas. For Lee, stories of his unmatched speed, strength, and philosophical wisdom have elevated him to a near-mythical status. Similarly, the tales of Siegel's prowess in Aikido and his supposed encounters with other martial arts legends contribute to his mystique. These stories, whether rooted in fact or embellished by fans and media, play a crucial role in defining their legacies. Beyond the realm of celebrity, storytelling is a fundamental aspect of martial arts training. Instructors often recount tales of ancient masters, legendary fights, and the origins of specific techniques as part of their teaching. These stories are not just historical accounts. They serve as motivational tools, teaching aids, and moral compasses. They help students connect with the martial art on a deeper level, understanding its history, philosophy, and ethical framework. Martial arts are not merely systems of combat. They are also rich philosophical traditions. The stories told within these traditions often encapsulate the philosophical and ethical teachings of the martial art. For instance, tales of masters who use their skills for self-defense or to protect the weak reinforce the principle of martial arts as a means of achieving peace and justice. Such narratives help instill values like humility, respect, and self-discipline in practitioners. The stories that circulate within the martial arts community contribute to a sense of collective identity and continuity. Legends of founding masters, historic battles, or the creation of specific techniques are shared not just as entertainment, but as a way of preserving the lineage and legacy of the martial art. This collective storytelling fosters a sense of belonging and pride among practitioners, linking them to a long tradition of martial artists who have come before them. While the power of storytelling in martial arts is undeniable, it also presents challenges. The line between fact and fiction can sometimes blur, leading to misconceptions about the capabilities of martial arts and their practitioners. It requires a discerning approach to separate embellished tales from historical facts, ensuring that the core principles and techniques of the martial art are not overshadowed by myths.